Hello, welcome to episode number 32 of Excel TV. Didn't think you were going to be still here, here still, did you? Hey, but that's okay. We're here this week with Bill Jella. But first off, Sylvia, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, good to be back and uh, great to be a part of the Excel team here as interim panelist, if you will. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Look forward to many hilarious adventures. How about you, Jordan? Oh, you know, I'm doing well. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio, where it is, uh, it is a great time to be in Cleveland, Ohio, because someone else is near Cleveland, Ohio, but not for long. How are you, Bill? I'm doing great, Jordan. Yeah, this is, uh, this is great having Jordan and uh, me so close. He uh, just popped down the other day, uh, shared a, uh, the best bag of dark russet chips I've ever had in my life. Thanks for introducing those uh, to me, Jordan. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to Excel sure, TV, episode number 32. Wow. Tonight is brought to you by Northeast Florida. Um, oh, not the world map, but, the, but the, the sign over here that actually shows you whenever you're supposed to add text to a cell. So that's brought to you by the at sign. <laughs> the next up is, of course, the, the, uh, the challenge section. Jordan, take it away. Oh, yeah. That's me. That is me. That's my job. I should have prepared something for tonight. Oh, wait. I did. So let's take a look at what we have. I'm just going to put on that screen share. Let's see here. Now, I said, or I asked, rather, what is a new chart type that appears in the Excel 2016 preview? So there are a lot of answers. Let's take a look at a few of them. We have... Waterfall, that's a great chart. The histogram chart, the Pareto chart, the box and whisker chart. That's always nice to have in Excel. Kind of not really hard to make on your own, but hey, it's a good thing that they added that. Tree map and the sunburst chart. Probably my least favorite being the sunburst chart. Now, who is our week's winner out of the thousands of uh, correct answers we received? Our, our winner is Sean O'Donnell. Congratulations. You will be receiving a free copy of Mr. Excel's new book, and Oz du Soleil has also thrown in a copy of Gorilla Data Analysis. Wow. So you are a two-for-one winner. And let's take a look at our next question. So application.screen updating, that is 26 characters long. So I want to know, what is the longest VVA command you can think of? So we will take very long answers, the longest one. Um, will be a winner, but we also have some extra prizes. So if you have one that's kind of uh, um, one that we haven't seen in a long time, that might be an interesting answer, too. So we might award two winners next week. So that is our challenge. And if you think you know the answer or you have any a funny suggestion, you can always go to Excel.tv or tweet us at ExcelTV or go to Facebook.com slash ExcelTV series. Also, make sure to check out our ExcelTV LinkedIn groups and our ExcelTV Facebook group. So, we have plenty of places on the web where you can find us and you can answer that question. And that is a fun one. I actually, you know a long one that I found, but I, I think people are going to find longer ones. So that's actually a really fun question. We're excited to offer it. And um, next week's uh, winner is going to win a free copy of Guerrilla Data Analysis, Analysis, second edition, I should be specific on that, by Bill Jelen and Oz Du Soleil. So back to you, Rick. Well, thank you for that, Jordan. Well, I have a very special guest this week, Mr. Bill Chellen. Bill, first off, beautiful wallpaper you have in the background. Would you mind talking about that a little bit? What's that yeah, all about? Sure. sure, absolutely. So what we have back there is uh, the cover of the new book, right? And you've heard of various uh, rock acts over the years who just number their CD, like with the Roman numeral, like Led Zeppelin II for, you know, Led Zeppelin II, and so on. And so I realized that I was coming up on my 40th book, and the Roman numeral for 40 is XL, right? And it's a book about Excel. So uh, this is just Mr. Excel, XL. Uh, and so what you see back there are a whole bunch of the uh, the covers from the, the front of the book, uh, just the large XL there, kind of uh, reminiscent of the old Rolling Stone anniversary issue, the 10th and 20-year anniversary, just had the Roman numeral on the front. So... Would you mind talking a little bit about how this book came about? It came came about in a, a very unique way. Would you mind talking about the crowdsourcing and the whole process yeah. of how this came about? Right. So 
Uh, again, I knew it was good, a special book. I had the title a long time ago, back when I was writing book 34 and 35. I didn't know what was going to be in the book, but I knew I wanted it to be a special book. Uh, and special, that means uh, color, glossy paper, a uh, whole bunch of things that are really expensive. And so last December, I went out to uh, first Kickstarter and then Indiegogo. Indiegogo was a lot easier to use. Uh, and said, you know, I'm trying to raise money to pay for the color printing in the book. Uh, if you pre-order the book, so give me $24, I will send you an autographed copy, and hopefully we would sell enough pre-orders uh, that we would be able to pay for uh, all of the color printing. Uh, boy, and the response was just amazing. I think within uh, two days we had enough uh, to meet my goal. Uh, and then as we went on, and more and more money came in, we actually added a lot of cool things. Sylvia... Uh, had pitched a cocktail book, an Excel cocktail book, so that's completely in there. Uh, the Excel joke book that Jordan and I had talked about is in there. Uh, a little bit of Excel theater from Deborah Dogleish is in there from Contextures. Uh, and just really a lot of fun in this book. Color throughout, uh, the 40 greatest tips of all time, and then another 30 tips from Sylvia for Excel's 30th birthday, uh, 40 keyboard shortcuts, uh, just it, it was a fun, fun book to put together. There you go, Jordan. What do we have? Is that uh, it looks black and white on your screen? It's there, actually Jordan. my book now. It's your book. <laughs> oh. oh, it does. It's your book. <laughs> it's the <laughs> limited edition cover. Uh, the limited, yeah. So that was another perk. You know, if you if you donated more, you would get uh, this handmade uh, cover that was uh, created down in Nashville on an old letterpress. Uh, printing press that hatch show print, just all kinds of different uh, different things. It was a really really good and fun book to put together. So Sylvia, this was your first book, uh, yeah, and you're doing this along with Bill. How was, what was this process like for you as as you came into it as a new author? It was a complete nightmare, Rick. I mean, we're oh, Bill's on the line. I'm sorry. No, that was, was the actually... answer I expected you to say, Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually really good. It was really great. Uh, the behind-the-scenes story that uh, hasn't been told yet is how this actually happened. Bill, I, of course, ran into you in Santa Clara, and we were shooting the breeze, and I was asking you how you were doing on that great book that you had that Kickstarter campaign going for, and you kind of just had made this face, <laughs> like... So let's just say Bill was a little behind on his book, and I got to thinking, well, I have all these wonderful, you know, ideas that someday we're going to culminate in a book, and I thought, why, why someday, why not now? So I, I, we had already kind of talked about the cocktail book at that point, um, so that was already a given, and I said, well, why don't I just step in and write some of the Excel tips as well. So uh, so that happened, and it all kind of just happened very quickly, and next thing I knew, I was uh, I was writing. So it was it was definitely a learning process, uh, one that I, you know, and a process that I hope to repeat many times in the future. Um, and, you know, like anything, it, it'll either get easier the next time around or, you know, new challenges. But it was really fun. I, I really, I, I enjoyed it. It was really interesting to get the... Um, you know, the insights from the community, Bill had um, solicited ideas from all of the people who contributed, you know, what do you really want to hear about? So that was really interesting to kind of get inside the minds of all of the uh, Mr. Excel fans and and uh, kind of run with it. So that's, that's what I know. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. It's so, definitely, it's really good to have a co-author because if it's just you working alone, uh, then it's very easy to miss deadlines. Uh, but Correct. when someone else is trying to hold you accountable, uh, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing, right? You know, you can't let the other person down. So. Correct. So, Working. Uh, great things happen in teams. Let's let's call it that because it's it's very true. You're you're right. gonna stick so the, to your uh, goals a lot easier for me anyway when you work with a partner or team. Jordan. So the first four. Um, those are uh, those were written by Bill, and then the next 30 tips were written by Sylvia. So just either of you, what was your favorite tip to, to write about or that you liked the best? Um, Bill, you go first. What was your favorite tip? Well, yeah, so it's my tip number one. It's the tip that uh, in all of my live seminars is the one that gets the gasp from the audience, right? So you have 500 rows of data, and you enter a new formula over in column 
up and sell F2, and you have to copy that down. And I always, it, when I'm doing it live, I grab the fill handle and drag, and it starts going faster and faster and faster and faster. You know, and you blow right below the e the, the end of the data, and everyone kind of laughs at that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I say, oh, look, just go to that exact same spot and double click, double click the fill handle, and you hear like a half the room will go, <gasps> right? You know, it's just it's a beautiful trick. So that's that's my favorite trick of all time. How about you, Great, Sylvia? Sorry. Well, if I now see, I can't just pick one. I'm one. I'm going to be one of those difficult answers here. But I did really enjoy. I'll say that um, I did really enjoy writing about. Um, it was kind of one of the last ones I wrote, and it felt more like a blog post than a tip per se. But it was uh, design tips for Excel presenters. So when I um, do presentations in Excel, I often <laughs> create the book in Excel, and I can kind of. Uh, so I have these like it's like a spreadsheet within a spreadsheet so you can kind of it's interactive and it's great for presentations because you don't have to switch back and forth between PowerPoint and Excel and so I have a lot of really obscure goofy kind of wacky ways that I make that work in a live setting uh, so it's kind of fun to talk about that because to my knowledge nobody else does it and I know it's not the most it's certainly not the most productive way of like writing a book or a you know a, materials that you would you would hand out to a class that you teach it's you know it's certainly not in design but I kind of like that it's um, that it's weird if that makes sense <laughs> you know it's different and it's it's something that is I, I think unique to me so that was fun to write about that so Bill from our from our millions of viewers we get a lot of email in and we actually got an email in this week with a special question just for you uh, this comes from Kevin Larabas at myspreadsheetlab.com. This question is, how many future book ideas do you have? Oh, there's a bunch. There's a bunch. And, you know, how about this for a, a trade secret? Um, right back here in the back, I listed all of the future books that I want to do, right? And I'm actually looking for people who want to write those books. Do you want to write a book on page 254? Mm. Uh, there's, the, there's the list, the list of, uh, of books that, uh, Excel for Human Resources, Excel for the Hospitality Industry, Excel for Call Centers, 27 Minutes to Excel, Excel for Search Engine Marketing, and then, here, this is a great one, this will be a bestseller, it's called Option Explicit, A Cage Match with Jordan Goldmeyer. Uh, a beginning Excel book in Spanish, 25 Excel Projects, Household Excel, <laughs> Elementary Excel, Stay-at-Home Excel, so it's all right there. Uh, you know, this, this book is as much a recruiting tool, trying to find someone else to, uh, to write those books for me. Jordan? A roller dog book. Um, wait, I didn't agree to that. So I'm supposed to be no, writing no, a roller dog book because I know you are. Because I, I had said to Bill um, that I, if something's on a roller, I would I would eat it. Like it doesn't really matter what it is. I love roller food. I'm wearing my Vienna beef hot dog shirt right now. So <laughs> no, chances are I won't be I won't be writing that book anytime soon. And I'm not sure what a cage match book would entail. We would just we would just it would have to be a we would argue about option explicit, which we're not going to do on this episode. I I promise. Oh, I don't know about that. I didn't promise that. <laughs> so, Bill, would you mind talking so, a little bit about the, um, the manufacturing process? What is it from the time you finish writing this? So, say you put the pen down until it shows up in a bookstore or it's available. What does what does that all look like? So I, I saw some pictures recently of them coming off a conveyor belt and. That was just crazy interesting to me. Can you talk about it, that a little bit? Yeah, that's wild. It, originally, when I first started doing books, they were printed in Hong Kong, which, of course, you had no chance to see anything. Uh, and then I found a company up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, that would print the books. Uh, and for a long time, I printed here in, the, in Michigan, which was still too, really too far to go away. Uh, but then I found a company that's probably just about 20 minutes uh, from me here in Ohio. So it's really nice uh, when they go to print. Uh, I can actually go up and watch. Uh, it's a two-step process on the first day. I think it was Thursday. Uh, they actually crank up these monster presses, two-story presses, uh, eight of them in a row, upper and lower, that are printing 32 pages at a time at a rate of 5,000 per hour, right? So this thing is just cranking out um, paper, ink on paper, and folding it into signatures. And what's what was just fascinating, so I, I went rolling in there right before they printed the cocktail section, um, and I'm watching these press just generate tons and tons of, of paper, and there's a kid at the end who's bunching them all up, you know, and then he grabs 200 of them, and it, my jaw must have just dropped. He, he just takes those, 
and chucks them up in the air over into a dumpster, right, to be recycled. And and this is called make ready. So they're running the press at full speed, but there's people that are still checking all the registration marks. And until they get a good uh, print, then all of like the first thousand copies they print just get chucked into the trash. Uh, and it's almost like watching a brand new kid, your brand new baby, just being thrown away. I'm like, so that all happens on Thursday, uh, and then it was the next Monday. It actually goes to binding. Um, so we had, uh, I think the covers were printed overnight Sunday night. The binding process is really fascinating. They have nine different sections of the book uh, lined up on conveyor belts. Uh, a machine grabs all those, puts them together, puts a strip of glue on it, uh, and it actually bakes the glue as it goes around, trims the... Uh, the book off, and then a long conveyor belt. That's what you saw in the, the video, Rick, uh, to let the glue dry, and then they finally uh, trim the whole thing. So that uh, that's just a fun process to watch. Although you know the printing actually happened a few days before. It's when it actually comes together, and you actually hear the books ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk out of the machine about uh, one every five seconds. Uh, it, it's just uh, it's it's a great thing to see. I'm I'm sorry that I'm moving to Florida because I won't be able to watch it anymore. Uh, as they continue to print up here in Ohio, but uh, this was a good one to watch. I can I can go watch them for you, Jordan. That would be awesome. I actually invited <laughs> Jordan. I said, Jordan, they're going to be doing this at two in the morning on Monday, and, and Jordan didn't know how to get out of that, you know. But then he invented a sleep study that he allegedly had to go to. Right. Yeah. That's. <laughs> that's Is that, that was, where the wallpaper came from, Bill? The the rejected ones that went in the bin. Well, I told him. So I, where I, did the wallpaper come from? Yeah, I know that they they throw all the stuff away when they're done, right? So their goal is 5,000 books. They print way too many in case there's a major catastrophe with the line. And so I said to them, I said, hey, rather than throw those covers away, save those covers for me. Right? And so I have a stack of 1,000 covers. And so Mary Ellen Jellin and I uh, just cut 56 of them up tonight and uh, made the wallpaper. Wow. Uh, kind of on the fly. And I also, you know, I have I have... Probably 300 of the cocktail sections left over. I could have made cocktail wallpaper back there too. That's very conducive for working, I find. Yeah, the cocktail <laughs> wallpaper. Cool. Yeah, yeah, we have so, plans for that. The Jordan question from you. I, I do have a question here. Yes, I, I do. This is a very important question. Um, now, on this special edition cover, there are these little imprints of of pennies. Can you tell our audience about why Absolutely, there are Jordan. imports of pennies? Jordan and I talked about special this edition cover. So this cover was made at a place called Hatch Hatch, H A T C H show print in Nashville, Tennessee. This place is amazing. It's been there since 1879 making hand cranked letterpress posters. They have just walls and walls and walls of type when I say type metal type actual physical letters. Uh, that they arrange on a bed and then put ink on that and roll paper over it. There are no computers at this place. They have no idea what Excel is. Um, it, you know, it's just like walking back into a hundred years ago. So, as I told them, I was creating a book that was the cover for an Excel book. Someone said, "Oh yeah, Excel. That's what accountants use to track money, right? That was their explanation of what Excel was." So, uh, the the designer, who was probably an intern working there. Uh, I said he called me up. He said, "I have this great idea. I'm, I understand Excel is used for money, so I want to put all these coins on the bed." And so you can see little uh, coin imprints there. Yeah, those little gold circles are all real pennies uh, that they actually put on the letterpress cover. You know, and I get it. I mean, it's it's I I track dollars in Excel, not pennies, but uh, yeah. So you'll Old see those stuff. on the cover if you're lucky enough to get one of those covers. Uh, that's great. Uh, so next up, Sylvia. Yes. Would you mind taking us off to the next segment on unfulfilled promises? Yes. Well, all right. So here's here's the deal, Bill. Um, you know, we here at Excel TV, we like to stay on top of the the hard hitting news. You know, like I'm talking like two years ago kind of news. Okay, so <laughs> for instance, um, can you all see my screen now? Okay, please hold while we share the screen. We did. We did? Oh, I'm so for sorry. For one second. All right, so we'll try that again. You know, comedy is all about timing, uh, people. So um, 
There are some unfulfilled promises out there in the world of bloggers, specifically referring to a uh, a blog post that was on the on Chandu's blog uh, in 2013. When you and Chandu had a uh, apparently a dinner meeting of some kind, we've we've heard and. Hundreds, I mean hundreds of, of people asked questions, and I don't think I saw you answer a single one of them. So we had the uh, Excel TV interns comb through the blog post to pick out the most important questions from this, um, from this blog, and you now have the opportunity to finally address them. That, rather that. than leaving these poor people hanging, you know, you 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 you're affecting lives here across the world, Bill. So now, I don't want to I don't want to rat out Chandu. Chandu took that recording with him as he left. We answered yeah, all of those questions. We never saw anything or heard anything after the fact. It was like he was going to try and find someone to uh, transcribe all of my brilliant, witty answers, and I probably couldn't so find anyone you, who could stand and listen to it. <laughs> So you did d discuss it over dinner? I don't know. Well, now's your opportunity in front sure, of the millions of Excel TV viewers across the land to address, for example, commenter number 108. Mr. Excel, if there was only uh, time enough left on this earth for one last spreadsheet, what would that be of? If it was the last spreadsheet, I'd do a spreadsheet that I learned from a four-year-old, right? A four-year-old. This is Mike Gervin's uh, son, Isaac. Uh, you just get three columns and fill them with equal RAND, select that whole range, and create a 3D bubble chart uh, with multiple colors, and then press F9 really? repeatedly. It, it's just a great way to, to end the world. For the last spreadsheet in the world, wow. That would be, if, if the world was about to end, that's how I would, that's how I would kill my time. You would, <laughs> you would play around with the RAND function. Okay, um, there, there you have it, commenter number 108. Um, commenter number 11, uh, he had a bonus question here. If the number 42 is really the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything, how can we make use of that in our pursuit of Excel bliss? I'm thinking about your 42nd book. You know about 42 being the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Wow. Have you thought about how that ties in with your book number 42? I, you know, I wish I would have uh, remembered this question before book 42 was written. Book 42 is already done, and I didn't even mention uh, didn't mention that 42 at all. <laughs> Because I was just going to say that could be a good title for book number 42. The answer to I've everything. I've only got 40 more to go. <laughs> 41 more Fortunately, to go. book 42 <laughs> was written by, uh, not published by me, but by a publisher who actually wants serious titles instead of uh, the things we use. Like legit. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> oh, man. All right. Of course, everyone's asking, like, uh, blogger number 22. What is the one function in Excel you would love to see that does not currently exist? We might have had these conversations while we were writing the book, but it, I'm not sure I ever it, got an answer. It's right there on the wall behind Jordan. I want VLOOKUP to go left. And Sylvia, I know you included how to make VLOOKUP go left in your book, uh, your, your 21st tip, but no one in the world would ever do that. I would just Correct. want a VLOOKUP comma minus three to go three uh, columns to the left of the key. I That's think a lot of people would, yeah. I think a lot of people would, would uh, agree with you. Um, all right, so moving on to a very important question here. With this, this might have to be our final one before the next segment. I don't know how we're doing on time. But, uh, well, this guy kind of cheated. He had, like, seven questions in one. Um, but he did, you know, he's obviously very impressed with your, your stature in the Excel world. And he's asked basically how many marriage proposals you have received as a result, pre Mary Ellen, of course, because that I'm sure is another fascinating story. We'd love to hear how many you had to audition before you found someone with the right name. But no, right, yeah, no, no marriage proposals, no, no, no Mrs. Proposals. Excel has come out okay. of the works. So Sorry. that's only one on this camp. That's only I'm, Hey, that's that's. That happened to me. It happens in the world. I'm telling you. He was impressed with my Excel prowess. 
<laughs> Go ahead, Jordan. I will say, okay, so I already asked you it, uh, asked you this, Bill, but how many um, Mr. Excel thongs have you sold through your cafe press store? <laughs> That's great. I have no idea. I have no idea. I should go but pull up the record. You've sold more than one, right? I have. I, I have no idea. I know I get a check from Cafe Press, but I don't know what idea or what what products are selling at all. Um, I should go check. the The story, the story behind that, was allegedly there was someone's girlfriend, right? And she claimed that her boyfriend was spending way too much time overnight on the Mr. Excel message board, and she was trying to lure him away from the Mr. Excel message board using the Mr. Excel phone. I don't know if it worked or not. You don't know if it worked. Well, I think I think somebody needs to send the news team in to find out more about that one. Um, we need, uh, we need yeah. to offer it as a prize on Excel TV. <laughs> Actually, that, would be um, horrible, we have, that would be the worst prize ever. That would be the last episode. You would be knocked off the air. Yeah. All right. Do you think Microsoft will continue to support VBA in the future? What's going on with VBA? Is there is there life after 2016 and beyond, or what's going on there? Yeah, so uh, we have another 20 years of VBA support, which will get me to the end of my life. So I'm great. I'm not sure you're going to, I'm not sure 20 years is all you've got, you know. Don, Don and Joy. That they're they're going to keep going, and then... How about the end gonna, of my working gonna... life? <laughs> Side note, uh, the inspiration for the Jitterbug Gel and Cocktail was um, inspired by, by, by Bill's ballroom dancing habit. So you'll have to read the, the cocktail book to learn more about that, but that's where oh. the, the name came from. Great <laughs> teaser. That'll, that'll force people to run out and buy the book right there. <laughs> well, we, we, see, we want to see the Periscope. Actually, you're all about the periscope. I want to want to see some of that Don and Joy action. Um, so anyway, yes, there were about 200 questions or so, and I believe um, <laughs> I love this one, dear Chandu and Bill. I love you both. There were some very sweet sweet questions in here. Um, the one that supposedly was the question of the night was scatter plot boxers or pie chart briefs. I have seen neither on Cafe Press. <laughs> I I heard from the person who submitted that question that they never received the autographed book, so I I think it's you know it's time to uh, make you know make good on your promises here, Bill. I will be happy to fulfill all of Chandu's <laughs> promises that he left unfulfilled. I didn't realize that he he made promises that he didn't fulfill, but I will oh, be yeah. happy to step in uh, and honor all of Chandu's promises. Just let me know what they were. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll be we'll be. Shipping that via the Excel TV uh, Pony Express, so you can personally answer all of them for the next time you're on. All right. All right. Well, that was super fun. Um, Rick. Yeah. So what have you got? So, so next up, if we can move on, Sylvia, to a riveting game of yes. Would You Rather. Okay. So we've got another fun little game here. To play has has anyone ever on the panel here has anyone ever played a game called Would You Rather? No? Well, you're about to. So, you know, people really want to know. People want to know who you are, Bill. So, I have found one great way to break the ice. Let's say you're with a new group of friends, you really want to get to know them. There's this great game called would you rather? So we're going to find out a little bit more about just how much you really love Excel with a few would you rather questions. And Excel TV, my co-hosts here, feel free to chime in with your answers also. So question number one, would you rather be stuck without Excel for one week or be stuck in an airport for two weeks? Stuck in an airport for two weeks with Excel. <laughs> That's not how you play the game. You gotta no, pick I, I, I would rather be stuck in an airport for two weeks. You would? Wow. I, I woke up Excel. yesterday and Excel wouldn't fire up. It said, we can't start Excel right now because we're updating something. So what am I supposed to do at work? Okay. Well, so far that's one, one in favor of 
love for Excel. All right. Question number two, Jordan. Rick, did you guys have opinions on that one? Would you would you give up Excel for a week, but to avoid being stuck in an airport for two weeks? Wow, they're 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 just stumped. Uh, I dig the airport. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bring it on. That's like home. Here's the thing. Airport, like none of my kids are there. <laughs> it's all other people's kids and everything else. Oh, the bars are there's open. A bar there. It's all good. Okay. Give me the airport with Excel set. Okay. So which, I should. I should which qualify version that. Of I think bars no. are closed. No Excel cocktails. All right. Okay. Next question. Would you rather, Bill Jellin, give up your status? Relinquish your entire status as an Excel master and celebrity, or go to all your future seminars and book signings dressed in a Clippy costume. <laughs> Tough question, Clippy. isn't it? Yeah, I think I have to take Clippy on that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, the, we no no surprises from from the audience here. The, you know, Clippy was cool once he was Clippy. dead. <laughs> once he was dead. I mean, he was well, annoying once he was alive, but then once he was gone, everyone reminisces about Clippy. I I have a Clippy T-shirt somewhere. Did Did you? Uh, how long did it take you to hate Clippy? Like back in the Clippy days, you know. No, I always loved Clippy. There was those VBA animations where you could make Clippy do like sixteen weird tricks. I was always having Clippy do all kinds of things. <laughs> You, was Clippy part of the VBA object? Uh, the I oh, absolutely. Know. There were there were all kinds of great animations that you could make Clippy do. I did yeah. not know. See, that would have been one of your tips, Sylvia. How to? Oh, I totally. I would have been all over that. How to drive your coworkers crazy by making Clippy dance across their screen or something? <laughs> I really time, time for one broken. more. Time for one more. All right. Would you rather? Have to watch someone manually scroll to row one million by hitting only by hitting enter. <laughs> Not allowed to tell them about the scroll bar. <laughs> or put drops of vinegar in your eyeballs. What kind of vinegar? Any kind of what well, does it matter? What kind of vinegar? <laughs> yeah. you know, Apple cider. Eyes is okay. Apple cider. Yes. Wow. Does it matter? You I mean it sounds something. it sounds really painful to watch the million enters. One oh four five eight. One zero four eight five seven five enters. Yeah. They would eventually I have to like, go get a drink, and I would I would reach over and press Control down arrow. I'm I'm not putting vinegar I in my eyes. I don't care what the other choice is. I'm 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 doing the one that's not vinegar in my eyes. I think wow. watching that would make me want to put vinegar in my eyes. Like I'd watch that and I'd say, all right, I'm not. I don't want to see. I don't want to live in a world. <laughs> I don't want to see a world in which this is happening. I would have to periscope. I would have to periscope the person pressing enter. And use it as a, a good Excel teaching lesson. So, is this before or after the Easter egg die? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry. wow, it's a unanimous just... panel. Me, so great game. Would you rather go pick it up at your book store? It's a marvelous way to break the ice at your next Excel cocktail party. Next up. The Excel tip section. Jordan, All right. over to you. I am, that is me. I am doing an Excel tip. So I am going to show you this tip. And actually, you know, Rick didn't know what my tip was going to be, but he sort of hinted at it beforehand. And this is really a very simple tip, but it's one um, that I found a lot of people don't know. And it has to do with concatenate. And... I take for granted um, how easy this is. And what actually started it was I had a, a friend who um, asked me, he said, oh, I'm doing these Excel tips. I have to do, these, I have to do uh, once a month present these Excel tips. And last week someone showed concatenate, and I just can't think of anything better than that. Um, so I showed him the ampersand, the shorthand concatenate, and that blew his mind. He said, oh, this is going to be great. I can one-up one up her. So <laughs> actually that's what I said. I said, you can one-up that, that last person who did it. Um, but so we all know the regular way to concatenate. You, type, you can type it out. It's kind of hard to spell, but C O N C A T E N A T E. So that's concatenate. What that allows you to do is join two 
different values from two different cells together. And this is a very common function, uh, one that's very commonly used. But as I've come to find out, a lot of people don't know about the shorthand way to do that. And that's using the ampersand. And that's what Rick actually uh, presciently um, and, for, and foreshadowed to at the start of the episode. So to do that, and I like this way a lot better than the concatenate function because it's more natural. So what I would do is I'd select uh, cell A2, and then I'd use the ampersand, and I'd select cell B2. And as you see, that actually gives the exact same result. Now, which one should you use? I personally like using the shorthand because it makes a lot more sense. We're joining something, and then we have an operator that allows us to join them. And I think it actually makes more sense than the concatenate function itself. Both work, um, but this one, you know, easier to read, easier to type. So that is my tip. Concatenate. You can use the shorthand ampersand. Bill, you have a tip? I do have a tip, and this one is from my new book, but it's not a tip that I wrote, right? As part of crowdsourcing this, I asked people to send me in their favorite Excel tips, and in reading all of those, it was amazing how many tips I had never heard of before. I'm not even going to bother to show it on the screen, just it's, it can be explained so quickly. Uh, so let's say that you have a bunch of data, and you've been uh, scrolling around the data, maybe control shift down arrow, control shift right arrow, and now you're at the bottom right-hand corner. And I know that I can always go to the other corner using control period, control period, but a beautiful tip that I'd never heard of before was control backspace. Control backspace, no matter where you are, will always bring the active cell back into view. So control backspace will go from the bottom of the spreadsheet back to wherever the active cell is. You know, if you just inadvertently use the scroll bars and now you're way out uh, beyond control backspace, great way to get the active cell back in view. That is awesome. And what I'm going to do is I am actually just going to take the extra step and we're going to show that just real quick because I did that uh, while Bill was was talking, and it is awesome. So here it is. I've selected a random cell. I'm just going to scroll out into the middle of nowhere. And now it is control backspace. Look at that. It jumps right back to where, where we were. That's great. Very, very cool. Well, that's all we have for the tip section. Back to you, Rick. I noticed in your, in your example there, everything was Stuart Goldmeyer. It's just all about, <laughs> all about Jordan. Just trying to say. So next up, the new section. Let's walk you through this. So there's a few things to bring to your attention. First off, if you've been living under a rock, Power BI Desktop is now available. So go out here to powerbi.microsoft.com forward slash desktop. And you can come out here and download. So you can download the Power BI Desktop right here. Go out and play. If you've ever wanted to get more out of Excel and start to toy with business intelligence and kind of what's new with Power BI, by all means, go out and check this out. Next thing that just happened in the last week is this part over here. Hey, Windows 10 is out. Um, so, so far, I've, I've downloaded this. <laughs> it took about a day. <laughs> uh, installed it, but you can even see from the picture here, uh, I guess my grill is in the way here, but it looks like looks like the, uh, the little window button's back, and all the things that I didn't like about the last version, 8. Dot whatever, 8.x, dot this is starting to look a lot like, a lot more like something I'd want to use. <laughs> so, so we're going to try this out, but those are the two big things. I'll kick it out to you guys if there's any additional news you'd like to cover. Um, I will just mention, uh, as the sole uh, representative, the, the estrogen side of the panel here, um, check out the hashtag, I look like an engineer on Twitter, um, raising awareness to crush gender stereotypes in the tech industry. So I, uh, I participated as well. Uh, there's some cool, cool women out there doing amazing stuff. Hashtag, I look I look like an engineer is uh, was all over the Twitter this this afternoon this morning, so um, I encourage my fellow Excel sisters to do the same. Check it out, a lot of fun. And last up, Bill, would you mind talking a little bit about the release date of your book? Yeah, so it uh, officially comes out September 1st. That's the day that'll be at Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble and your local booksellers, uh, but of course. 
Excel TV insiders can uh, just come to MrExcel.com and go to our store where it is available for sale, shipping today, so you can get it before it comes out. Uh, so check that out. And Rick, let me uh, amplify some of your news. Uh, Windows 10, you know, the, the horrific thing that happened uh, is Windows 10 broke power pivot in Excel 2010, uh, and so that alarm was sounded, but the Excel team has found a registry hack that will allow Power Pivot to continue to work. So for those of you who are not doing Windows 10, because you still want to use Power Pivot in Excel 2010, there's now a solution for that. Uh, so that's some good news. They, they found that within about 24 hours or so. So good, uh, good improvement there. Well, great. Well, thank you very much. Well, where can you find us? Gosh, we're all over the place. Uh, but I'd also encourage you to go over to our website at excel.tv. Particularly, even on this page where the program is being shown live right now, there's links out there where you'd be able to find Mr. Excel's book, along with Sylvia's book and Jordan's and everything that's out there. You'd be able to click on that and go ahead and reserve that now. So all of that is out there. Uh, also, feel free on that page to leave your comments there. Uh, there's no way Bill doesn't know where that page is because we'll remind him that we have his email and you know, we'll say, hey, go check out the page. So. <laughs> so leave your questions for Bill out there, particularly around publishing, or if you want to sign up for one of the four or 500 books that he has, nothing more than a list or a title of. So if you want to be an author, go check it out. So our next episode is going to be in two weeks where we're going to have a Mr. Chris Macro. Chris Newman will be joining us, so we're very anxious about that. But in until that time, Bill, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you on. It's uh, great to get some insight on how the manufacturing process works. To me, that was just absolutely thrilling <laughs> to watch all the watch all the uh, the pictures of all that as everything was coming off the manufacturing. Yeah, it was cool. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Well, until next time, this is Rick Grantham along with Jordan Goldmeyer and Sylvia Juhans reminding you until next time. Keep on excelling. <laughs>